Right, we're going to head to Ecuador now. We're going to get the latest on the violence there. The president has ordered 22 armed groups to be, quote, neutralised. Uh, they're in a state of emergency. That's been in place since Monday. Things like schools temporarily closed. This is all after a notorious gangster seemingly escaped from prison. Right, we're going to look at some pictures now. Quick warning, they are quite shocking. This is the moment gunmen got into a TV studio while it was live on air. So this was on uh, Tuesday. Police did eventually get there and uh, 13 men were arrested. Right, let's take a look at the map now just to see where Ecuador is. Uh, clearly that border with Peru is crucial here because we've heard from uh, authorities in Peru. They have sent uh, armed reinforcements to that border in case uh, the violence spills over. Um, earlier I spoke to local journalist Carolina Loza Leon who's in the city of Manta in Ecuador. There has been a suspension on uh, public offices, so everyone is going to work virtually from home. Same with universities and school. And this represents a problem for many people who have connectivity issues in many parts of the country. Many people are afraid to go out. There has been a series of detentions overnight during the hours of curfew. We have a curfew from 11 a.m. to 5 to 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. And everyone's waiting for a swift response. The manhunt for Fito. Uh, the drug gang leader uh, that had the prison break uh, basically is, is on, it's still on. And we can see some people are waiting for a response from the government. And we're still starting to see some differences among politicians on how this has to be handled. So it's a lot of uncertainty and staying put at home. And just, it's just give us a sense of, of how unexpected or not this, this dramatic rise in the recent violence is. Well, I was on the coast, like many people were going up, coming back from holidays, from the New Year's Eve, which is a big holiday here in Ecuador. The president was at his beach home this weekend. He had different programs among that, giving some gifts to kids in the main square. You would see more of a military presence, but nothing like this before. Nobody expected this. We had seen violence, especially when there were transfers from uh, drug gang members, key gang members, uh, uh, from one prison to another, but nothing as coordinated at a this level in several cities in the country as we saw yesterday. People were in a complete state of panic and terror. Uh, nobody had expected to see this coming. I don't even think the authorities were. As I said, the president was having his usual uh, activities, but on, on his beach home on, over the weekend. Yeah, so where does all this leave the president now? This is the key test for him. He promised that he would fall the violence. It was one of the main promises that he had. And because he was a newcomer, many people um, trusted him because of that reason. They expected a new figure, a fresh face to, to deal with this violence. Now we have other um, former political uh, presidential candidates criticizing him or offering him support. There is a lot of support from the international community. He recently held um, a conference with uh, all the embassies present in the country, and they're uh, uh, mentioning that they, he has full support, other politicians from the opposition as well. But everyone's question is, how is he going to deal with it, and how fast are we going to see a way out of the violence? Thanks to Carolina Lozat-Leon for that.